Since 2016, UN Women has been supporting partners to implement a leadership capacity of elected women leaders to influence decision making in the council. In the recent past politics, women were least thought of and trusted in the political arena. However, as time moved on, women have started gaining ground in politics at all levels. This is because of the support from different stakeholders, some of whom include UN Women. UN Women is a branch of UN that focuses on projects that uplift women and enhances governance. UN Women have continuously trained women to participate in politics and also boost their ability to debate on political grounds. We chose women at sub county level because we know that in Uganda a lot of resources go down up to the sub county level. So there are a lot of needs at the sub county level where we felt that if we have strong women leaders at the sub county, then they can be able to advocate for the needs of the women and men at that level. Between 2018 and 2019, a total of 500 ladies were trained in decision-making, advocacy, and accountability in Eastern, Northeast, and Northern Uganda. We also have other programs of training, like we also train members of parliament. We would like them to know their roles. We would like them to know about the rights of women. And we would like them to know how they can present themselves as leaders how, can they, how they can advocate for issues of their communities and how they can be accountable to the people who elected them. Akalimwine Florence is one of the beneficiaries of Women Empowerment Program in Kamuli District. Akalimwine Florence is the speaker at Balawoli, sub-county in Kamuli District. <laughs> Aye ingo bana ngo kola chi ngo we tia ngarso bola kuba mbwa ntu aye bato afuno misome chuo zenga kulu angi zenga karimu na chama funa ni sawe yoku bana anga unfuni echini gini gie chikuba ntu insobolo kola chi ukuvua kuwendi ukwe yongera kuwa wandi era na chira angi dada mumisome chuo enchera walu anga tuli kola bietu aye zido na bakuba ntu insepulu angi sinzira kumusome. She says the training helped her gain knowledge that aided her in passing some bylaws that support the girl child, especially in early marriages. Bulunji. So, we have a lot of people who are working in the world, 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 who are working in the world. Joseph Odonkara is the speaker of Rome Sub County in Kitgum District. His revelation has been empowerment of women during council meetings. According to him, this has helped women councillors in Orom to competitively lobby for maternity ward, scanning machine, three motorcycles and 60 million shillings allocated to improve the children's ward. The participation of the women council was not all that to a certain max level. Because one, they were lacking uh, a kind of a training on what they should be doing in council. So the training was not all that adequate for them. I know when we had the training from uh, Sewigo, uh, their capacity was a little bit strengthened. They were better placed uh, to raise up issues and to speak up for themselves. Because previously, when, whenever some issues is presented, the council will find men dominating. But after the training, uh, as a speaker, I can uh, just for sure evaluate the performance. Betty Okello has served in the council for a period of 20 years in the position of a chairperson for the women caucus in Rome sub-county through UN Women Support. 
she managed to spearhead a number of activities during her tenure. Forming the caucus, we come out with our resolution about maternity health. On, in our sub-county here, yeah, we don't have maternity room and children ward. We are just using only one room for main oral delivering, or not delivering, or sick passion, or the old word, only one for every people. Men and women, they are combined together. Lakel Scovia is a youth leader of a Rome sub-county. UN Women also works alongside some parties like Center for Women in Governance, Siwiko, in training youth leaders at sub-county level. We have been uh, having very many cases reported in the office here, and even to us. So, uh, by good luck, NGOs called CARE, they came when we raised our concern on the GVV when we are for a caucus, then they give our view to those who are CARE, because they also handle on the GBV. So they have selected the role model men, Paparish and household women maintenance, Paparish and even the youth. Civic education and training of trainers is one of the main focus areas of the program. The program brings together all women irrespective of their education status. Achumo Helen, who is the chairperson of Anyara Women Caucus in Kalaki District, applauds UN Women and other partners like Ackford for supporting women counselors. We, essentially speaking, we had very many changes in our lives because since we elected, we were not inducted. And uh, the other training was part of induction. Now. So we, get, we got experience from there, which made us also able to, to bring some ideas in the council. We can participate now. We, can, we, we learned about moving emotion, point of order, point of information. All those things we learned from there, but for us we were not inducted. As councillors. Ahipo Helen is the representative for Ongwol A Parish from Anyara Women Caucus Group. She says they managed to convince the council to build for them three nursery schools, secondary school, and a maternity ward. Uh, lack of money. Money was not enough for the for Sokadido. So we said we cannot leave all these schools like that. So we came out, we came up as a caucus and said, no. Let's uh, let uh, some other things also should be taken to other schools also. So that's why we went as we used to go as a team, the women female counselors. We used to go as a team, visiting schools, talking to these young young children of ours. Anyara women caucus have also gained confidence and presentation skills from the trainings. Women have been trained in all categories to increase their numbers and competence of lobbying. They speak of the sub-county. Many of them are men. And you know, this wield a lot of power. They have a lot of influence on what takes place in the council. So we realize that for these women to be successful in their advocacy and in the work that they are going to do, we need to train the men as well. So that these men can be their allies, so that these men can support their agendas, so that these men can understand issues of gender, so that when it is presented in council, they don't resist it. 68 years Alamo Mary represents the elderly in Anyara Women Caucus Group. She is one of the beneficiaries of the trainings which has helped her guide and empower her fellow elders in Anyara through the SAGE scheme. <laughs> Awiro Monika, the vice chairperson Bululu and LC3 councillor Ino Chilakor, has worked hand in hand with her member of parliament, Maria Goretti, in service delivery. They have also successfully lobbied for community outreach budget of about 428,000. We also lobby through our MP, women MP, that is Maria Goretti, to help us at least with uh, delivering bed. 
and it happens successfully. Awinyo Sara is the female representative for Kibimbo Parish from Bululu Sub County Women Caucus. Really, we cried for transport, of going outside, but it is not seen till now. We move, we move the motion in the council, and it was budgeted, but till now, they say that there is no money. The Women Caucus in Alua Sub-County is chaired by Yipo Felista Irene. They have mainly patent issues affecting their communities. We lobby for the latrines from Popo, that is an organization and NGOs called the Popo. So we lobby for the latrines, so those ones are now built. In Abalang Primary School, there is a latrine. Uh, Oriamo Primary School, Bira, that is it. As for Imenyo Beatrice, the vice chairperson for Abalang Air Parish, UN Women through Ackford has helped them to know their right as women. Uh, because now in the, at, in the home when we are two, the issue of gender, it has made me to know that a woman also can do what a man can what? Can also do. According to Imenyo, women have also been inspired to join politics. They have also managed to pass some bylaws that have helped communities, for instance, promoting girl child education and arresting perpetrators. It has even made me to know in very many things, uh, such as uh, uh, when we are maybe when we are in the council. Yeah? So, and if we, for us, when we are in the council, at least there must be men and women. 54-year-old Ilunyo Margaret is one of the female councillors. She applauds human women for bringing together the women to create more numbers. In our trading centres these days, if you go, women have caught up with what we have been telling them. You find every woman trying her best at least to do business. Mm. Even if you find a woman selling this some men, I don't know how they call it in English, or men are silver, silver fish. Silver fish. Mm. Even the tomatoes, even the onions, you find them also moving up and down like that, trying to get money. Because if I can remember from there, they told us, you a woman, if you have money in your pocket, you are powerful. The focus group has also protected youth. Alado, Martha, female youth councillor for Alua Sub County, says that the project has also helped her to advocate for issues affecting the youth in the council. As I was joining, I knew I was going to manage it. Cause me myself, anyway, either the brain I have, either what I don't know, but even I manage it. But now I'm getting more, more experience, more experience through Ackford, and they have given me another courage to continue. Although you and women have played a big role in empowering women in leadership skills, there have been also some challenges registered. According to 52 years Amira Difuna Caesar, a woman councillor from Kasle Parish in Kamuli district, language barrier and logistics has been one of the challenges faced by women councillors in her sub county. <laughs> Abandi bako bomo kazi bwabo ngo mukulembeze ngo bali na wali kufuna sente tamubona wo amutwala anga chichi nga ti mwami we ayempera na bwe mfuna challenge edo nga ba mi badinko bi mala na ira na ba chala bange nga ba mi bazirawo na banga mba mbogera ko ebintu ebi na kanti bana kino go bango chikola chibino no mwami abata kuichiriza kuya mbantu transport issues and lack of support from men also hinders women from attending meetings Removed is the issue of over drinking because we found that domestic violence comes because of over drinking. Because people from here they start drinking early in the morning those days, but when we talk to them, at least there is a big change now. In Rome sub county, communication and sometimes bad attitude towards work cripples their performance during caucus meetings. Communication is very difficult, we are in the far parishes. And the second one is transfer problem. In any case, they may bring it, but we have no transfer. 
In Anyara, the elderly persons are sidelined from some benefits because of their attachment to the SAGE program. <laughs> Mr. Samson Kawusi says that the biggest issue faced by women in his sub-county is illiteracy and inferiority complex by the councillors. Uh, the most important challenge is the issue of language. Because when you are debating in a council, if you want to use any other language which is not English, you have to seek for permission. So you are at the mass of the speaker either to allow you <laughs> or not to allow you. So language is the biggest problem. However, uh, the speaker has always handled uh, this issue of language and given them a chance. According to Akalimuine Florence, the speaker for the women caucus in Bulaoli, their main challenge is the unlimited number of women sitting in the council. Because of this, they face challenges of having quorum in passing motions. <laughs> The speaker for Central Division Kitku Municipality, Nyero Bosco Abore, confirms that women councillors face challenges of male domination in the council, time management, lack of confidence, and language barrier. There was no, not many women wanted to join politics, even though some of them wanted to join politics. But their husbands sometimes deport them. Eh? They stop them. No, no, no. If you join politics, I'm going to leave you. Then the women can come down. Mm -hmm. But after certain suggestions. Ilunyo Margaret says limited training opportunities have been one of their biggest challenges in the council. The women who are actually trying their best to do the business, there is improvement in their homes. Mm -hmm. Some before they are close to the what, getting fish from the lakeside, some could get the loans and get, get, climb the vehicles and go and bring fish and they sell. And they were doing well from our, our homes there. According to UN Women Program Specialist Agrippina, the challenges faced by the women have been noted and UN Women is looking forward to addressing them. However, some of the challenges pointed by the councillors may not be sustainable in terms of budgetary issues. Five districts where we are working, is, is, those are some of the districts where really the issue of uh, girls, they are not doing well in terms of special of education, in terms of uh, early child marriages in terms of uh, forced marriages, these are rampant challenges. For example, we have found this in Kaberamaido, we have found this in Karamoja area, so the situation is really not good. One of the reasons why we even chose to work in these districts is these are the districts where there is really a big need for women empowerment, for girl child empowerment. Despite these women councillors operating from different geographical locations, their problems seem to be patterned to each other. Because of this, the women have given solutions to some of these problems. Three quarters of the, uh, the, the council, it was men who were dominating before the training. And even some of them also were making messes. Mm. They, were, they could not say the right thing. Mm. And in fact, the handouts which were given from the training there, we were not selfish with those handouts. We gave them also that please go through this, how to move emotion, how to second, mm. maybe point of inquiry, such things. It helped them also. We were inducted just last year. So if it were not because of that training, our council was just going to be a comedy and the fun. <laughs> However, Achiro Rita, the executive director for UNIT, says that the training is continuous and aims at empowering more women from over the 6,000 women they have trained across the country. Our interest in women um, is beyond the partnership we've had with UN Women. So when you ask how many women we've trained, the partnership we've had with UN Women. So when you ask how many women we've trained, we've trained over uh, 3,000 women across the country. However, the training that we've had at the village level that we partnered with, with UN Women, we trained over um, 600 women. Of course, some of them went through, others didn't go through. 
There are those who may not have gone through as counselors, but they're in leadership in other positions. Now, the ones who went through, these are the ones who are serving as counselors. So the numbers trained versus the numbers who are serving is different. But the beauty for us here is even those who do not go through are serving in leadership in other positions. Yes, we will train them again, but we might not be training them on the skills that they need to do their work. So we will be training more women on uh, who want to run for different offices. So we're going to be preparing them as women candidates uh, for the 2021 elections. So for us, training women is a continuous process and we'll continue working with them, both in terms of their leadership abilities, but also in areas of gender and women's rights. UN Women Program Specialist, who responded to the query, says that UN has developed a work plan geared towards improving and empowering women in 2020 to 2021, especially during this electoral period. I'm not